So yes, thank you everyone for joining me. I can't believe we're already into our second week of our brand new series. So my name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomi Canada. So thank you very much for joining me today for another Genomi HQ Instagram Live. And today we're continuing our second series, Genomi's Awesome Accessory Countdown. Now, last week, if you tuned in last Monday, we did number one was the ribbon sewing guide. And the wonderful thing I loved about that, not only that we could use all the decorative stitches on our machines to make uh, or embellish ribbon, but uh, this uh, attachment will fit virtually all machines. So long as you have a little uh, hole for the screw in your needle plate or the bed of your machine, you can use this guide. So that's really good. And then number two, last Wednesday was the uh, free motion couching foot set. There are two little feet and it allows you to attach uh, a variety of yarns free motion wise onto uh, whatever the project. So that's very fun and easy. Now these are on these, these previous Genomi HQ Instagram lives are on the IGTV icon that's on the um, little TV uh, icon with the little antenna um, on the main page of the Genomi HQ uh, Instagram page. I will load these eventually to YouTube as videos, but I'm waiting for something kind of special for those YouTube videos. So they're not on YouTube yet, but they will be. But right now, again, you can go back to IGTV on the main Genomi HQ Instagram page to watch uh, one and two of this Genomi's awesome accessory countdown. And today, number three is some serger accessories. And specifically, I will set those over there. Specifically, boom, I've got, again, so much to show you there. There are some fabulous accessory feet for your serger. It doesn't matter if you have the AT2000D, which is the air thread serger, fabulous, top of the line. Or you could have like the Pro 4DX serger is kind of like a mid-range uh, serger, but the uh, feet and attachments that I'm going to show you will likely fit on almost any serger. Now you can get more information about the various uh, attachments and accessories, not only for your sergers, but for all things Genomi, in your Genomi accessory guide. It's on the Genomi Canada website in the accessories tab, but I've uh, uh, printed it out here. So that way I always have a copy with me as well. So again, more information there. And as always, check with your fabulous Genomi dealer. Now, the feet I'm going to talk about today are our beading foot and cording foot. And actually, there's two cording feet. So this allows you to uh, kind of embellish. I absolutely love it. So your serger is for way more than just finishing the edges of garments, which is why I think a lot of people uh, originally, myself included, when I studied fashion design all those years ago, uh, got a serger to finish the edges of my garments. But you can have so much more fun with your serger. So by having the uh, accessory feet, optional presser feet, then you can put on beads, a string of pearls, for example. So great if you're into bridal or, you know, prom dresses, uh, skating costumes, dance wear, uh, cosplay. How beautiful is that? Uh, or again, I love using it to couch uh, yarns on, so that's wonderful. And then with the cording, uh, uh, the cording foot, I'll show you how to put your own wire in your fabric to make your own wired ribbon. So that's very cool and use a variety of cordings, uh, again, that you would like couch on using your serger. So very simple, very easy. Uh, I'll hold on to that sample. 
So what I love to do when you get all of your, you know, serger and you go through your instruction manual, you make yourself these big binders like this. Uh, red preferably, since red is Janome's color. But I love with the page protectors and I keep all my little samples of all the different techniques and all the uh, various pressure feet that I get for my serger, all the attachments. You make yourself little samples, you put them in page protectors, and then this way you have your own reference guide because maybe you're uh, like me and you do a lot of sewing late at night or you know um, maybe after hours when your dealer is closed and, you, and you're wondering how to do certain techniques. Uh, if you go through your manual and again go through the, the uh, instructions on the blister packs of the accessory feet and make yourself little reference guides, you've always got something to go back to. So that's very good. So, yes, let me get rid of that. You see, I have lots. <laughs> Two big binders because there is so much you can do with your serger. So, I will show you these. Now, again, as I said, uh, serger is for way more than just uh, finishing the edges of your garment. So, I have two bags, two tote bags. One was made entirely on the sewing machine and the other was made uh, constructed on the serger. Now, obviously the top stitching details on both were done on the sewing machine, but can you tell which bag was made on the serger and which was on the sewing machine? Tanya is shaking her head no. Oh, and I should of course acknowledge our fabulous Parts and Notions coordinator, Tanya Denier is here. Yes, again, filming me. Uh, once again, I'm at the Genome, Genome Sewing and Learning Center in Oakville. Uh, and yes, we are still closed to the public due to COVID, but um, again, we're just going by government guidelines and uh, hopefully soon uh, we will open up for classes in person, but if not, I'm also developing some online classes. Uh, so you can write me, ooh, conveniently, Tanya made me this beautiful drawing, classes at genomi canadacom and I will put you on the mailing list. So that way when I've got my online classes down and ready to go, or again, if we're able to do uh, classes in person, then you'll be on the mailing list so you can keep in touch with what's going on at Genomi HQ. So that's fabulous. So to let you all in on the big secret, this little bag here was made, constructed on the serger. In fact, we even have piping feet for the serger. So this allowed me to cover my piping and then insert it into my fabric all on the serger. Uh, this whole pocket, pieced pocket, was all pieced on the serger. And the whole bag itself was constructed on the serger and only on the uh, sewing machine for this top stitching detail then did I use that? So again, sergers are so versatile. Now the beading foot, one of my favorites, I love doing uh, yarn couching. Now on uh, last week's show, a number two countdown was the free motion couching foot set. And that's how I attached this yarn after my quilt here was already uh, together, then I thought, oh, I want to embellish this seam a little more. So I use the free motion couching foot set to affix this yarn. But this yarn here on this outer border of this like picnic uh, quilt, my fabric was already together. This was like a quilt as you go technique. So I already had my backing and my batting and my top layer of my quilt and my backing and my batting and my top layer of my border. And I laid them like that, right sides together. And then with the beading foot, I couched that bit of yarn onto that seam and then folded it out flat there and how simple and easy that was. So now this uh, picnic uh, quilt can go through the wash and dry, no problem. And because of all that serger thread, it's affixed really uh, securely. So if you want to follow me down on the machine here, we have our beading attachment in a blister pack. And as always, there's instructions on the back of the blister pack. And if you open it up like that, there's more. There is a ton of information in here. So again, I always suggest to people throw away the, the plastic part of the blister pack, but keep this cardboard with all the instructions. Again, put that in a page protector in your serger reference binder, and that way you always have it. So the beading attachment is very cool. You can see this is my regular serger foot. 
I already have, to save some time, I already have a beating foot on the serger, but here is our little beating foot. And the uh, secret, much like the beading feet for our sewing machines that I demoed in the A to Z with Janome series, uh, those videos are all on the Janome HQ YouTube channel, so you can go back to review that A to Z with Janome series, and I demoed the beading feet for the sewing machines. Here is a beading foot for your serger, and just like with the sewing machines, there's this big channel on the underside of the foot. So that way the variety of beads, or in this case yarn, will go right through that channel. Now I always suggest if you can then purchase this foot from your dealer and then you would take this to the craft store just to make sure that whatever uh, yarn or beads you're interested in would easily fit through that channel. Uh, it's up to four millimeters wide. Now because I don't know what millimeter that is, I just again, here's my string of pearls. Uh, I'm thinking these must be bigger than four millimeters because when I lay them in the groove, you'll see that foot is not level. This uh, string of pearls is way too thick. When my foot is really level and on the machine, uh, there's no woo, no way <laughs> I'm going to be able to get that string of pearls through my foot. So I don't want to use anything as big as, as these. Uh, but again, a norm... Um, again, kind of normal size, up to four millimeters, uh, will fit no problem. And again, the foot is nice and level. So that is wonderful. So very cool, very fun to use. Now, when I go to put on my uh, yarn, for example, there's really nothing uh, I do to the machine. I just attach on my beading foot. And again, it just tucks in under the uh, guide of the foot. Now, because my knife blade is right up there, you'll see um, about the only thing I want to do is retract the knife blade. On the AT2000D, there's this little um, button here that I just, uh, this little lever. So there's my knife and then boo, blink, and it's gone. <laughs> so very easy. So that's about the only thing I need to do. And then put my foot down and away I go. Now, depending on the length of your, or the, the thickness of your yarn, then you might want to adjust the length of your stitch. And again, how simple, how easy that is. You could go like super fast. And then once I'm done, you know, cut this off. And with your knife blade deactivated there, you don't have to worry about cutting any of your... I love using this big fuzzy yarn because I've used gray thread and you barely see it on that sample. And then again, on backside, it's all beautiful and, and beautifully clean, finished, and very secure with all that serger thread. Um, now, as far as thread goes, any good quality serger thread, uh, Janome has got conveniently that you could get from your Janome dealer. This is a pack of serger thread with uh, neutrals. So there's four black, four white, four gray, and four like neutral or a, a taupe, light tan color. So that's great. Or again, ooh, to me, it's just like candy. This is our Madeira Arrow Lock. Ooh, look at all that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> ah, it is. It's fantastic. So a bunch of neutrals for your serger. So uh, again, available from your Janome dealer. Or even since your serger, you can use a whole variety of threads. Ooh, this is Madeira Katana. This is multicolor thread. Look at how gorgeous those are. So uh, even though this is cotton thread, and typically I would use this in my sewing machine, not in the serger, but in the serger you can use, again, a variety of threads since um, your loopers are going around the fabric. They're not going through it. It's only your needle thread is going through the fabric. Uh, in your loopers, you can really use a lot of these fancier or thicker threads and more of a decorative element. They'll show a little better. So because of that, though, in my upper looper here is where if you're going to use a, a thicker thread, a, a more fancy decorative thread like that Katana multicolor thread, I would use it in the upper looper since that's going to show more. Uh, this is also the Madeira Aeroflock thread that this is um, 
more textured, it's uh, fuzzy, so this is great to uh, provide more coverage for your um, project. So this I use a lot for like rolled hem or uh, it's got a lot of uh, loft, so again it covers your seam very well. So you could use this as well. It is uh, polyester. It's uh, known as like a woolly poly, so it's uh, very flexible. Uh, I did a Genomi America Facebook Live at their Genomi Sewing Machines page, and I talked about some decorative threads in your serger. That video is still available on the Genomi Sewing Machines page, again, Genomi America, or you can go to the Genomi HQ YouTube channel and find that uh, serger presentation all about using decorative threads in your serger. So it can really, um, again, uh, just make your serger more versatile, not always so utilitarian and functional. So that was my yarn, again, super simple. But now I want to put on, ooh, a beautiful string of pearls, for example, on my um, project. So I'm going to follow the instructions in the blister pack and just quickly turn this over. You can see with the simple uh, flick of a button, I'm going from S to R for rolled hem. Can you hear again? Oh, sure. Which is going to, right up here is my... I'll open that a little bit. Right up there is our stitch finger. So by clicking this from S to R, I'm gonna deactivate that stitch finger. So if I hit R and then there, that stitch finger has completely disappeared. So uh, whatever serger you have, you're going to consult your instruction manual and uh, set up for a rolled hem, depending on what your uh, manual will say. Actually, I'm going to leave that there. And as well, there's instructions on the back of the blister pack. Included in your blister pack of your beading uh, attachment will the, be the foot and this beading guide. And again, you can take your guide to the craft store and make sure, will my string of pearls or beads go through that guide easily? Now, you can, again, pretty much use this guide on any serger if you have, and I open this cover here, if you have a little uh, screw at the front of your serger there, you will be able to affix this guide. And I'll just slide my cover open. And if you've ever wondered, oh, why does the cover slide like that and slide? I don't have to open my cover. I just slide it open and get that guide into place and then take my little screwdriver and tighten it up. So, so long as your uh, serger has that little screw, you can use this beading guide and click that into place. And then you will see that again, by having this guide there, it is perfectly aligning. I use my little tweezers that come included with, I believe, all of our sergers. So you'll see then I'm using the left needle to use this beading foot, and it works out perfectly. The needle is to the left of that string of pearls. I'm using the beading guide that comes included in the blister pack, so I can easily run that string of pearls all the way up against the edge of my fabric here and I have it uh, set over for, again, the rolled hem. But I'm not going to, over here at the side, we typically, when we do a rolled hem, we adjust our stitch length to where it says R. Sorry, I need to read. So where it says R. Normally, when we do a regular rolled hem, that's what we do. But in this case, I don't want to do that tight stitch length because I'm going over these pearls. So I can do, you know, three or four, whichever. Uh, again, the, the bigger your beads, I would lengthen the stitch. And then once I have extra uh, length of pearls on the back of the foot, so then I, I know that it's gone all the way through, then I can drop my foot, oops, drop my foot, and away I go. And by having that knife blade disengage, you don't have to worry about, you're not going to strike anything and the uh, looper is just going right over I'm trying to go slow although again uh, it's so great to go super fast on the serger but I'm uh, going slow so then you can see so the loopers are just going right over the string of pearls 
and that left needle is just catching the fold of the fabric. So this could be, and then now that I'm done, I'm just gonna clip my pearls. And again, nothing's gonna get caught, nothing's gonna break. So this could be at the edge of a jacket, let's say, or this could be a skirt hem and how beautiful that would be. So depending on your application and where you would put this string of pearls, or again, instead of being on the uh, outer edge of a garment, let's say, or of a quilt, how beautiful as that is, I could instead uh, fold out this other piece of fabric here, and now it's become almost like a pin tuck down the um, surface of my blouse, let's say. Um, or again, this could be a, a quilt. This could be the border of the quilt, and there's the bulk of the quilt over here, and that's just on that edge. So again, how beautiful is that? And simple and easy to do on your serger with the beading attachment and again comes with the little foot and the beading attachment here so super simple and full instructions on the uh, blister pack oh and i just wanted to show too if you are doing your string of beads like this and depending on your fabric if it's a uh, kind of uh, flimsy and uh, if you're again doing this for like bridal or prom dresses or something and you're using a very delicate fabric you can always beef up the edge of that fabric with some water soluble stabilizer so that's what i've done here that i've put that down against the bed of the machine then put my fabric over it and my string of beads and then surge that on then after i'm done i can cut the majority of this water soluble stabilizer away and then i will immerse it in water and completely dissolve it so uh, that'll just add a little bit of um, beef <laughs> to your fabric to make it stitch a little easier and it won't you know pucker up and of course I got that stabilizer I know from that <laughs> Madeira stabilizer starter pack again it is so versatile I swear once you get the starter pack you will find other ways to use all the stabilizer that is included in this starter pack that's why I love it so much so Yes, little tips and tricks like that really help make your sewing so much easier and better results. So the next uh, feet I am going to demo are our cording feet, and we have two of them. So cording foot number one has this little spiral wire there, and cording foot number two has a guide in the front that I have um, strung through this ooh, beautiful metallic cord. And then there is a groove on the back of the foot. So in this cording foot number two, we can use a variety of cords. We just wanna make sure that they go through that groove that's on the, the back side of the foot, the underside of the foot. And again, you would purchase these foot from your Janome dealer, and then again, maybe take these to the, to the store with you. Um, and you know, it's not just the craft store either. I get a lot of mine, this is from like the hardware store. <laughs> and uh, even this uh, is cotton clothesline, but hey, I could still decorate with it. Or a lot of the times I use this as the filler for my piping. Uh, or maybe you can use, uh, this is the cotton twine, uh, you know, you'd buy at the grocery store to um, string up your turkey legs or chicken legs. And then, um, or even you could use some uh, embroidery floss, you know, something like that. So you can use a lot of these decorative cords. Uh, this cord in particular, this metallic cord, or how about this... Um, uh, like soutache uh, cord that f when I demoed the free motion couching feet last week, then I said, oh no, these are too stiff. They're too thick to go through the free motion couching foot, but they would go through this cording foot number two perfectly. So again, you, there's, you just got to use the right foot for the right job, for the right product, and you can do it no problem. So this would be a perfect time to use uh, that thicker cords through this cording foot number two. Uh, cording foot number one allows us to put, I can do wired ribbon, which I'm going to demo. So you can make your own wired ribbon, take whatever fabric that you want, and you do a rolled hem on the edge so it finishes that edge beautifully, but then that attaches this wired ribbon. So again, you can make your own wired ribbon that way. So how cool is that? I've even seen dresses where they do that 
the oh, on the hem. So, oh, that would be amazing. Or what about like on a on a, on a neckline or something? Or yes, on a cuff, anything like that where you could like really pinch it. Uh, think of again like for home decorating, pinch it and hold it into shape. Like how cool is that? It's really amazing. Uh, or then you can put. This is just some yarn, but again, you could couch on some uh, thinner yarn that way along the edge of your ribbon. So that's possibility too, and how cool that is. Again, how uniform, how quick it is. The fun thing, once you get these feet home, you just start playing and experimenting. And this is why, again, you make your little reference binder to uh, find out what stitch length works well and you know left and right needle and all of that. So again, there's your wired edge, so simple. So you would buy probably, this is some floral wire that uh, you would get at the, again, at the hardware store, the craft store, uh, just very thin wire that you would typically, um, you know, tie up your uh, rose bushes onto your stakes and stuff in your garden. Uh, but it's really cool to put through this hole. Now I find it's easier to thread this wire through the foot while it's off, not attached to the machine. And for the case of this yarn that you could also put through this hole, and if that's a little hard to put through, you could use these wire looper threaders. Now these come with the AT2000D air thread serger, but they're also available in this separate little package here. So again, you could order these from your Janome dealer. And these wire looper threaders really make threading whatever serger uh, very easy. That I could put that wire looper threader through that hole of the foot. And then the yarn is through the big eye of the looper threader. And again, that just passes right through. So that'll make it easier to attach that way. So that's an option as well. I love using these, um, again, looper threaders for a variety of uh, purposes. So that's very good. Uh, so yes, and then to uh, change the feet, as always, there's a little button at the back and you just snap one off and snap on the other. Now I've already set this up for a rolled hem. And again, you would consult your instruction manual on how to do that. But I'm going to use my right needle. And then again, that's gonna be a little closer to that little guide in the foot, uh, well, let me grab maybe this, ooh, this piece of fabric. There's so much on my table. Oh, and I said it makes it easier to put this on um, when the, uh, put the, the wire through when the foot is not on. Uh, yes. Now you want to make sure too that you have with any of your cords and your beads, uh, your wire, leave yourself a, a longer length as well. So there, that's snapped into place. My knife is retracted. Again, I don't want my wire hitting the knife to dull my knife blade. And then away I go. So by doing the rolled hem, Oops, I just have a little thread there caught over. By doing the rolled hem, again, that's going to finish off the edge of your fabric. And then there's your wire ribbon going right along. It helps to hold on to the back of your wire ribbon because it's so slick, it'll, it'll pull right through. So definitely you want to hold it at the back to make sure it doesn't slip through. And then again, it's just kind of doing its own thing. It's super simple and so fun. And what a great way to use up uh, a whole bunch of like fabric scraps. And then there we go, like how beautiful that is. So you never have to worry about either spending the money for your wired ribbon, but as well this way that really lets you coordinate to any uh, garment you're making, any uh, project, any home deck. Weddings and stuff. Oh yeah, weddings would be beautiful. I think that, wouldn't that be great? All at the back of, you know, all the chairs or maybe along like the, the head table and you tie that on the back of the chairs. So again, how beautiful customized. that could be. Oh, completely customized. So that is that 
uh, application. Again, I'm going fast because um, I'm trying to be mindful of time. But again, the fun thing is once you get these feet at home, you read the instructions in the blister pack, and then you just go to town and experiment. So that was cording foot number one. Cording foot number two, again, has the guide in the front and then the groove in the back of the foot. And I will put on this foot. Now, I'm going to show you this little tip too. When you use this cording foot number two, and there we go, you'll notice by having my uh, needle in the right position as I was just using, ooh, that's going to be like right on top of that cord. I really don't want that. The instructions say to use the left needle. Now, I could go ahead and re-thread, you know, unthread my right needle and then re-thread my left needle. But instead what I'm gonna do is loosen my right needle and I'm just gonna move it over to the left needle slot and uh, definitely tighten these screws. Even with the needle not in the right spot anymore, I'm gonna tighten that screw because I don't want the vibration of the serger to fall out. So even though I have my thread, you know, in the right, threading guides, I've moved my needle over to the left just for this application. It just saves some time. So that's a little right tip. Uh, just make sure the thread doesn't wrap around the, um, the eye of the needle, uh, the tip of the needle. And yeah, you can sort of cheat like that uh, very quickly and easily. So that way by using the left groove, then perhaps you can see it's going to go right to the left of my cord. So nothing is going to get caught. I'm not actually going to stitch through that cord, which is good. Now I can also either stitch the cord at the raw edge of the fabric. And again, the serger is going to finish that edge. And then that encases this cording. So if you use, again, a decorative thread as a contrast, or again, maybe you want to use a matching thread so then you see more of your cording and less of the thread. So it's whatever kind of look you want to do. Or then I can loosen my, so yes, then I can loosen my needle tension. And I'm actually going to put this in between two layers. Anne McAdory says she's loving these learning lessons. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. That is so great to hear. I love hearing the feedback because, you know, when we were thinking, Tanya and I were thinking, well, what can we do? We, there's so much information out there. So what can we do to help make it easier and, and get all this info to you? So I'm so glad that it's, that it's helping. That's certainly why we're doing it. So I have, again, I'm, I still have my rolled hem all set up. But now I'm going to loosen my uh, right needle because then again, even though I'm in the left side, uh, my thread is still threaded through the right side. And then instead of this uh, narrow rolled hem, I'm just going to lengthen my stitch, maybe a four. But I do still have my uh, little stitch finger set at R for rolled hem. And my knife blade is still down. So now I'm going to just stitch this down. And then by loosening my needle tension, I can spread my thicknesses of fabric open. And you see that ladder stitch forming? It's like a flat lock. So I have my edges of my fabric folded back. So again, it's um, neatly finished. And then I spread it open by having that looser needle tension. It lets me spread my layers open. So again, we've got like that ladder stitch. So this way, and depending on what thread you would use, some metallics, we've got beautiful Madeira metallic threads. So then you would play around to get that. You see that little bit of sparkle of the thread. So this is like having a, um, a pin tuck in your fabric. And again, if you used that uh, metallic thread, 
then it would really show up well. So that would be like a, a corded pin tuck in a way. Uh, but instead of on the, the back side of your fabric, the way the traditional pin tucks are, again, this could be on the, on the right side of your fabric. So how quick and easy it would be that way to put a whole row of pin tucks um, down a blouse or a skirt or whichever. So very fun, and especially to use these like metallic yarns. So that's really fun. Uh, oh yes, and then um, I neglected to mention, yes, with your floral wire, you're gonna need your little um, snips as well, your wire cutters uh, to add to your sewing uh, toolbox, uh, wire cutters, and then maybe even um, some pliers. If it's easier for you as you have your wire through the back of the foot, if it's easier for you to hold on to the wire with some pliers uh, as well as you get it started, then those are always good to, I keep these, and of course they're red for Janome, um, I keep these in my sewing toolbox. So that way I always have it with my little floral wire. So that way, again, whenever I wanna make some wired ribbon or whatever, I've got all my tools together. So then that really cuts down on your time so you can make the most of it. So yes, I know that was a whirlwind of information, but definitely check with your Janome dealer to get um, your cording foot number one or cording foot number two or your beading foot and attachment. Oh, and one last thing, using cording foot number two, if you want to make gathers very quickly and easy, couch over your cord and look at that. Pull your cording instead of zigzagging at your sewing machine like I used to do with dental floss, <laughs> zigzagging over there. I can use cording foot number two and uh, couch over that cord and then I can gather that way too. So again, there's so much versatility with all of these feet. So check them out at your Genome dealer. And if there are no further questions, uh, no, fantastic. Okay, then enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. I will see you on Wednesday for number four of our Janome Awesome Accessory Countdown. So enjoy your day. Tanya, do you want to say goodbye? Say goodbye. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you all for joining me, everyone. Have a fabulous day. Bye. <laughs>